Hi, my name is Drew and I'm an application developer here at GeoMarble in Alexandria, Virginia. Today we're going to go over a nearby Survey123 add-in. Let's take a look. So first, on your computer, open up Survey123. And I already have the add-ins enabled, but if you don't, I'm going to walk you through the process for that as well. So click on the icon in the corner, click on Settings, and then hold down the Settings title at the top of the screen and then go down and click on beta and make sure add-ins is enabled. If it isn't, enable it and then restart the application. From there, you're gonna to wanna to go back to settings, click on add-ins, check to see if the add-in is present and then make sure it's enabled by going to the three dots, the three dots again, and then making sure enabled is checked. Once it's checked, restart the application and then you should see the add-in either as listed as a tile amongst your surveys or as a service or a tab down below. Before we get into the actual nitty-gritty of the add-in, I want to go over what makes the add-in so special and how it works with Survey123. As you see here, I have all of my surveys lined up here on the Survey123 homepage, and you'll notice that there are blue dots in their corners. This represents the amount of data that's pulled in from the survey's feature service, known as the inbox feature. In the inbox is a number of features and geometries that hold data that the survey has been collected. The core element of the nearby add-in is that it's going to show you all this data in real time in a certain set radius around your location. My location right now is being simulated by an NMEA file that I have put into Survey123 for demonstration purposes. So right now we're going to fly all around DC looking at all the different nearby features. So let's get started. Here I'm going to click on the application, and here I have a radius around my location. You'll see here, right now, the only layer that I have enabled is a polygon layer for DC parks, and labeled here in orange. Right now there's nothing in my radius, so as a result, if we go to the list view, there's not going to be anything there. Because so right now my radius is set to 1,000 feet, and my web mercator projected 1,000 foot radius has no features in it. However, we can still click on features to edit them. So when you click on them, you're taken to the actual edit survey screen and you're given a highlight of that feature as well as the fields you're allowed to edit. So I'm going to edit it to say edit 4 and then click check. It's going to send it up to the server and to your survey. And then you can click the green button to refresh it or you can just give it a second and it will refresh as well. So as you see, now not only is our feature now in our radius, it's about 500 feet away, and the edit that we just made has been updated. You can also edit it by clicking on this directly in the List tab. And just like the green button, you can pull down this list to refresh as well. Now say you want to change the radius. If you go to the settings, you're given a number of different settings you're able to change. So 1,000 feet is a little small. Why don't we change it to two mile radius. So we've changed our, our radius to 1,000 feet to two miles, and so as a result, it's much bigger if you go to the map page. This should include many more things in our list tab as well. Now all these parks are now shown within our radius, and you can edit those as well. They're labeled, they're listed here from closest to farthest. But if you don't want to work with just polygon layers, like the DC Parks one, for example, you can also work with lines and polygons. So I've enabled three extra surveys here, DC Roads and DC Museums. Once those are enabled, they should instantly show up in the map. And just like the polygons, you're able to go click on them directly and edit their data. They also show up in the list view as well. You can also batch enable by clicking this switch and it will enable every survey you have that has valid inbox data. Or you can do vice versa and disable all of them at once as well. These get saved to the settings and so the these settings will be perpetual until the next version change or whenever you change them yourself. You can also choose which tab you want to start with when you open the app. Right now we start off with map view, but if you want to start off with the list view instead, that's fine. We hope you enjoyed our more in-depth look at the nearby Survey123 add-in. We had a blast making it, and we can't wait to see what other add-ins are made with the Survey123 Extensibility Framework. 
Again, I'm Drew at GeoMarvel. Thanks for watching, and be sure to check out more JS-related content on our YouTube channel. Thank you.